This is the Joe Smo Show, and I'm here with uh, Emilio and Michael. My name's Jefferson, and we've got another exciting show for you guys this week. So uh, to kick it off, uh, there's a lot of scammers out of India and Philippines that are getting rounded up like crazy. Uh, I see out of the Philippines, there's 277 uh, scammers, Bitcoin scammers that got rounded up. I guess it's a bad day if you're cheating the public on Bitcoin. Uh, what do you think about that, Emilio? I think it's uh, really, really awesome. Uh, so we, we run a Bitcoin IATM network here in the U.S., and these guys are the worst types of people. So I'm very happy that someone is somewhere is, is doing something about these scams Do you get a lot of people calling you uh saying hey I, I need 800 bucks i'm trying to use your machine i'm you know my son's been kidnapped um not kidnapped but uh they say that they're sending money to their children in faraway countries but it just doesn't really sound too believable to be honest right right how about you michael do you get a lot of those kind of phone calls Uh, no uh, way too many of them, but it's not usually people getting kidnapped or anything of that nature. It's uh, usually just people getting ripped off. It's uh, people trying to buy things that are 90% discounted or people trying to be extorted where they're saying, you know, uh, we have your data and we're going to delete it all. It's all encrypted unless you send us money. We've had quite a few of that, the ransomware stuff or whatever they whatever they call it. I'm fortunate enough not to be aware of any situation where there was any kidnappings, though. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. I mean, I read about recently the dark web. Uh, they're selling bitcoins uh, for eight hundred dollars that are normally like ten thousand, right? They're selling it because you know it's tainted. So, have you had people trying to buy cheap bitcoins from your ATMs, Michael? Just because of the lack of fungibility, you mean bitcoins that were using right, right. Or something? Um, I don't know. I I don't think so. I don't think we sell those kind of bitcoins, but. Um, we, we have some blacklists in place and this kind of stuff to prevent known uh, drug markets and online gambling houses and this kind of stuff, uh, known addresses from our customers sending to those. But in general, we require that our customers send the Bitcoin to themselves first. And then from there, they do whatever they're doing with it. So, um, you know, unless it's incoming from a known address, there's not really much we can do to prevent them from doing what they want with their Bitcoin. Cool, cool. How about you, Amelia? Yeah, that uh, that sounds like a scam. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it really does. I'll, I'll take some eight hundred dollar bitcoins any day. Yeah, right. <laughs> as long as they confirm on the blockchain, I'm uh, yeah, I'll take them. It, it, it probably accept payment in Bitcoin too, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> probably testnet. Yes, yeah. Send me one bitcoin. I'll send you a hundred bitcoins from testnet. So. Yeah. Oh man, uh, or the old, the whole Bitcoin cash fiasco, right? So. All right. Well, how about this? I mean, we should. There's this coin star. I mean, have you guys ever been to a coin star machine? I, I used one a little while back. Uh, I just put like ten dollars in it. Such a nightmare to get the bitcoin. But have you guys tried coin star machines? Yeah, I've uh, done it quite a few times. It's it's pretty cool actually. I like it. The fees are a little, you know, high, but not really. I mean, around eight percent. I think they advertised 4%, so I was a little bit surprised when I got hit with 8. Um, but, uh, yeah, not bad. Well, I know, Michael, it's a little bit far away for you, but how about this? Uh, we should see how their customer service is uh, at Coinstar. We should ask them, call, do a call. Do you guys, will you guys be up for a call to Coinstar? Let's see how I their customer service is. that's a great is. idea. Let's do it. All right. Let's, let's ask about some of their pricing and let's ask about how long it takes to get our Bitcoins and these kind of typical questions that uh, Amelia and I get every day on the uh, support lines. Yeah, and uh, we're, we're trying to send it to some uh, ransomware scammer, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. Did you know that our All website right. is full of helpful information? Visit Coinstar.com now to quickly find a kiosk. See how the Coinstar kiosk works and learn about our no fee e gift card choices. This call may be recorded or monitored for quality assurance. Thank you for calling Coinstar Customer Service. My name is Jamie. How may I help you? 
Hi, my name is Mike, and I'm interested in using your uh, coin, coin, coin star machines to purchase some of the the bitcoins. Um, how does that work? I see. I will be more than happy to help. Um, basically, with our machines, sir. Um, uh, you can purchase a uh, Bitcoin to our machine. However, uh, these are, I mean, these are, let's say, um, I mean, uh, once, I mean, what, you would like to know as to what are the process, right? Um, that yeah. You will so, do. do I just come to the machine with my with uh, use my credit card or my debit card, and uh, mm. I can buy these uh, for Coinstar? For Coinstar, sir, um, you can purchase Bitcoin using bills. Mm. We don't take gift card, credit card, or any card. Mm. So. Okay, so I go to the machine and I put uh, bills in, and it's going to send that Bitcoin into my telephone, or it goes uh, into the cloud somewhere. Or how do I get my Bitcoin? So. Um, with our machine, you will only, um, again, you can use paper money, mm -hmm. so you will insert it into the cash acceptor. Um, you can en um, enter any amount up to $2,500. Mm -hmm. So then once you have, go ahead. Sorry, sir. go ahead, continue. Yeah, so you will just be, because... The first thing that well, so once you go into our machine, you'll we'll just have to first just click on the buy Bitcoin option. Now you will review and accept the terms and condition, and you will be asked to enter your phone number. After that, you will be asked about, <coughs> I'm sorry, to enter or put in or I'm sorry, insert your bills, mm -hmm. and then. Once the transaction is done, you will receive a voucher with the Bitcoin redemption code. You will need to create an account and sign in to your existing account with Redem. Um, to okay. coin coinme.com slash redeem. Okay, so you don't, I don't get my Bitcoin right away. It goes on to another, another service on this coin, coin.me. And do you know what the price is right now for the Bitcoin? If I want to buy one, uh, how much paper money do I need to bring? I see. Um, basically, sir, for the for the prices, we don't have that information because it fluctuates or it changes every um, two minutes. So it depends. Okay, so there's not an approximation, or how do I know how much cash I need to bring if I want to get one Bitcoin? So, with, um, for that, sir, I believe that's with going me. Okay, gotcha. All right, am I also able so, to sell Bitcoin to the machine? So can I go to your machine and put my Bitcoin there and it will give me the paper money? Maybe I'll... Uh, if the coin me people are the ones that handle this, do you have a phone number for them? Maybe it's easier if I contact them. Uh, for what, sir? Uh, for coin me, the people that have more information about the Bitcoin that your machines do. I don't. Uh, it doesn't yeah, seem um, like you have very many information. Do they have a phone number?
Are you still here? Hello? Yes. Yeah, I'm still here, sir. I'm still checking for the Bitcoin option. So, um, for you're looking for Bitcoin, I um, mean, coin me phone number. Is yeah, I you're think looking for coin me, coin me phone number. Yes. So for coin me number, that's one eight hundred. Nine four four three four zero five. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a good day. You're most welcome, sir. Will there be anything else? No, that's all. Thank you. <laughs> Holy <laughs> cow, that was ridiculous. <laughs> Torture. I was trying to find a button to remove, I'm sorry. That was a painful experience. Uh, <laughs> at least we got an 800 number other than 800-123-4567 like uh, online. So. <laughs> oh, okay. L wow. Let's call. Let's call. Um, let's call Coinstar and see if we can talk to them about uh, about things that are possibly a scam. Let, let me pretend to be a customer here and, and say that that uh, my utility bill company is trying to get me to pay in Bitcoin. All right, you want to do that uh, back to the same number, or do you want to try the CoinMe number? I think the CoinMe number are going to be much more knowledgeable. I think Let's that, try CoinMe. Okay. I think the way that this works is Hold that we get you get a voucher I think, uh, you go to CoinMe's website. And on CoinMe's website, you're going to have to actually put in your KYC information and that kind of stuff. Right. All right. Um, all right, yeah, let's uh, – yeah, I mean, what do you think? We should call it CoinMe or – yeah, you wanna, me. Let's call up CoinMe first, and then we can call uh, uh, back Coinstar, and you can uh, fake being an idiot. All right, that sounds good. Here we go. <laughs> Three, two, one. Did you know? You can find all of our... I don't know about this Bitcoin stuff, so man. I think we better send our money a different way. And it's like getting confusing. At the top of the page. Do you guys operate 24-7 on yours? Not anymore. We used to, but that was a Thank you for calling the Coin Me customer experience team. My name is Gerilyn. May I have your name, please? Hi, yes. Uh, my name is Emilio Pagan Yorno. <laughs> How do you spell your first name? Yep, it's E M I L I O. Oh, hi, Emilio. Good morning. How may I help you today? Good morning. Um, I have a, an issue. Uh, I uh, used one of the uh, Coinstar machines to uh, purchase Bitcoin to pay my FPL electric bill. Um, but uh, I think it was a scam. Uh, do you know if FPL accepts Bitcoin and why they would be charging me $2,000? The man on the phone said they were going to shut down my whole, my whole power to my apartment. You know, I got scared, so I... Uh, I paid the bill. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I know you do apologize for, I'm sorry. Let me check just to confirm you paid uh, an amount to buy Bitcoin and then you already transfer it to, you know, to a third party wallet. And you said <coughs> it's some, you know, it's something to the about, you said scam because it's not yeah, it's accepting some... your wallet. That, you know, I talked to my, my father about this, and he told me I'm a dumbass. Like, if, if FPL doesn't accept Bitcoin, so uh, w I don't know what kind of what kind of scam you guys are running here, but this doesn't seem very good. Right, right. But we will try that. Emil, you may get your driver's license number to double-check your account, please. Uh, <laughs> my, my driver's license number? I, I, don't, yeah. I don't know about that. Uh, can I speak to your manager, possibly? Um, sure, Amelia, but right now they are not yet available. They will be available later, 9 a.m. Pacific time. 
So we still have an hour and 25 minutes for them to be available on the phone. Got it. Yeah, I'm, I definitely don't feel comfortable doing that, giving you that information, especially after I got scammed, I guess. Um, is there, uh, could you tr transfer me? I, I heard that the, the coin me, the coin me was partnering with you guys. Could you transfer me directly to one of their representatives so I could talk to them on the phone? This is actually a customer experience for CoinMe, but for our technical escalation team, um, they're still closed. They'll be available later, 9 a.m. Pacific time. All right, so we'll have to call back. Uh, do, do you know, by any chance, if uh, my utility bill company does accept Bitcoin, or is that, uh, is that no. sound shady? No. No, we don't have that information here in our end. We oh. don't have even the access on how if it accepts or not. All right. Oh, I mean, hey, what about the government? Do the, does, does the government accept Bitcoin for taxes or, or maybe uh, there's some sort of fraud on my social security number? Is that something that the government would uh, accept Bitcoin on? I am not sure for that, Emilio, but, you know, to answer your question, you can give us a call back once our support team is available. You can also check our website at coinme.com for frequently asked questions and see if that question is also available there. All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Emilio. All right. Wow. Uh <laughs> wow, and I thought easy bit support was bad. This that's, is, uh... that's awful. If, have, if I was a complete idiot, I might actually send that, that Bitcoin to the, the fucking uh, the fake utility bill company. I'm sure we've had lots of people who've done that. But uh, I like how when you call in, they've got like 20 different options routing to different people. Like uh, maybe that gets rid of a lot of calls. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Well, yes. let me. <laughs> and you, you can, can call how... us. You, you can call us and, and, and test out. Uh, to see what Chris is up to on the phone line. All right, what's the number? All right, it's eight, eight, Emilio's four, phone's gonna four. ring. Yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> eight four seven 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 two eight two. A lot of sevens. Yeah. That was horrible. That claimed me. That was absolutely horrible. I think even the Venezuelan guys that we were paying to do our support when EasyBit did support did a much better job than that. They knew what Bitcoin was and how the machines work and stuff. I hope, I hope uh, Chris is going to embarrass me. <laughs> 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 this is going to be bad. Hello. You've reached unbanked customer support. Hey, Emilio. Please wait while we connect you. Thank you, Emilio. Rock it, Emilio. Maybe pound on the wall and tell Chris to pick up. <laughs> I mean, he is there, uh, right? Or is he I'm sure he is. Around? He's helping others out. Or is he playing World of Warcraft right now? You have reached the voicemail <laughs> box of 9546654. It's going to go on his one, performance six. report. <laughs> At the tone, please record your voice message. When you are finished recording, you may hang up or press pound for more options. Hey, uh, th this is John. I I'm standing outside one of your machines right now. I I'm trying to buy some some Bitcoin so I can get my computer back from this something called a, a ransomware or something. Uh, I I think you're just a part of the scam too because I. I put the money in, and I don't know where the bitcoins went. And what what the hell is this bitcoin shit? I just want my my files back, man. I mean, they they locked up all my pointo too. I mean, I can't believe it. What the hell, man? All, all right. right. Well, so what do we got next? We got the I stolen bet. stolen uh, ATM video. We got the Marshall and Sterling insurance that. Yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. So we've got this video here that I guess uh, uh, we'll put it up on the screen of a couple of guys just kind of casually walking into a store, picking up a machine, ripping it. Uh, and, you know, the only thing holding it in was the Ethernet cable or the power cable. They unplugged that or ripped it out of the wall and just casually kind of walked off and threw it in the back of their car. 
And uh, this was something, yeah, it's something that happened a couple weeks ago as well at a mall. We saw some people just wheel right out with a uh, with a Bitcoin ATM. I mean, how much dollars are in those things? Not much, right? I mean, it can't possibly be that much. Easy Bits insured for seventeen thousand dollars per machine, and we've had thefts that exceeded that. Well, no, what I'm trying to say is, it's like in a lot of cases the machine is ultimately worth more than any cash that's in there, and they can't like easily resell that machine, right? You can't reuse the machines, but usually they do have a lot of cash in them. So, yeah. I mean, sometimes you have customers that'll come and put five grand or eight grand of cash into a machine at one time. And if you have a few of those in one day, you can easily have thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars in a machine. Oh, I see. I see. But yeah, that's a, I guess that's the thing. There's no way to lock up the cash. I mean, what about that? Do you, uh, if there's enough cash in there, do you then run out to the machine and empty it out right away? We've oh, been yeah. a lot more aggressive about that lately. So lately, there's been a lot more uh, break-ins and such uh, for. The first few years of EasyBit, at least, we didn't have any break-ins. We had one machine in Amsterdam stolen, our first machine, but we didn't have any real break-ins. And then in this last year, there's just been a ton of them. And uh, I know at EasyBit, we put in some extra security belts and uh, locking hasps and higher security locks and this kind of stuff and bolted machines down and serviced them more frequently so that there's not as much cash. Uh, Emilio, what are you guys doing over there? Yeah, we're just frequently picking up and... Uh servicing the machines so that there's not so much cash in one machine because you know they're pretty easy to break in even if they're bolted down to the ground there you can just kind of open up the doors with a, a crowbar or something like that well i know this one atm operator he was out of westlake village um he would uh, go to festivals and all kinds of different venues like that he would have and i'm not kidding sometimes a hundred thousand dollars in each one of the machines, you know, if the festival's like really popular or something, a hundred thousand dollars a machine, and you got like four or five machines there, all lined oh. up. You know, like for, the traditional ATMs. Yeah, yeah this is for non-Bitcoin ATMs. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that that makes sense. Like, uh, I mean, I remember when I went to Bonnaroo, there was like it would be twenty of those things, and the, some of them even ran out of cash. Like people right, were right. using them left and right. And that's what I'm saying. Those machines had a lot more cash in it. I mean, if you backed up a U-Haul to that collection of five machines at 6.55 in the morning before the festival opened, you would have walked away with a cool half mil. Yeah. Easy. So I'm wondering why they're specifically targeting Bitcoin ATMs. That's like low. I think, uh, I think low you'll value. find that these uh, the ATMs that have like $100,000 in them, that they're pretty heavy-end ATMs with big safes in them and have die packs in them and all sorts of added security measures. And your average Bitcoin ATM doesn't. So, I mean, we're getting better nowadays. The hardware is changing literally over the last year uh, at night and day difference uh, with the security implementations that people have put in place, the hardware manufacturers, as well as companies like TPI, who are doing the uh, these extra locking brackets and hasps and security belts and enclosures and all sorts of things. Um, it's also a matter of with the Bitcoin ATMs that, uh, a lot of them, you know, it's not like having 10 ATMs right next to each other where there's security and stuff like that around. A lot of these are in convenience stores or in uh, gas stations or, you know, in electronic cigarette shops where having $20,000, say, in a machine in one place is actually a lot more money than you have, like, in their cash register and a safe in the back of a store. I know a lot of times when our machines have gotten robbed that they don't even take the cash registers. I don't think they ever have. They have always solely specifically targeted the ATM. Yeah, yeah, I mean... For my traditional ATMs, uh, they very rarely have over six thousand dollars in cash in 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 twenties uh, for the traditional side. But like Bitcoin, I mean, that could easily reach over twenty grand. So, and they're just easier to to break into. Just the machines aren't as as matured as as uh, I don't know, like the hundredth generation of a, a Gen Mega machine is on the traditional ATM side. And your traditional ATMs also have, in general, a lot smaller transactional volume per transaction. So, I mean, your average person on a regular ATM is not going to be transacting five thousand dollars or something. They're going to be transacting a twenty or a fifty or you know a hundred something like that. Yeah, and with use, I mean, the the amount goes down, whereas with use, the amount goes up for the Bitcoin. So, right, with the Bitcoin sense. ATMs, it's mainly incoming cash and outgoing Bitcoin, not incoming Bitcoin and outgoing cash. Exactly. 
Yeah. yeah so which, uh, go ahead, Jeff. Yeah. So that's the thing. I mean, it. I think the industry is going to definitely mature over time. Um, you know, you mentioned die packs. You mentioned some of these other, uh, and I know GPS on the machines and stuff like that. So, I mean, I think it's just a matter of time before I think these uh, vandals will really. Um, find that it's not worthwhile to take a Bitcoin ATM. There's no Bitcoins in it. It's the big thing. They think they're walking away with you know a bunch of Bitcoin and actually they have a bunch of worthless fiat currency. <laughs> well, there's there's more and more companies working on solutions like what um, Sheldon was talking about the other day when he was on the show, which right. is where people will be able to use their ATM through their debit card or ATM card through the ATM for Bitcoin. So that way there won't even be as much cash. And also recently, a lot of these companies like Garda have started to work with Bitcoin ATM companies to service the cash, which speeds things up and makes it a lot more efficient. I know that in the past, when we were first getting going, like trying to run around empty machines was very, very, very inefficient. And we had machines that were way too far spread out and we had no real cash logistics services. But today, uh, I think there are a lot more banks and a lot more cash services that are working with people. Um, the other thing that you have to remember is that on these traditional ATMs is that it's all set up for insurance very easily, whereas on the Bitcoin ATMs, insurance is very difficult, which is another topic that we wanted to briefly discuss this week because um, I know I was able to get some insurance for my ATMs over the past year. Uh, Emilio, were you able to insure any of your machines? No, actually, I I'm familiar with Marshall and Sterling for the traditional ATM side for their insurance, but I actually didn't realize that they insured Bitcoin machines until you said it in the, the Telegram group. So uh, I'm definitely going to be contacting them about that. I used them for about a year and we had three or four, maybe five break-ins. And um, I, I haven't got my check yet, but uh, I think that they have closed on all of them and that they're uh, going to replace the machines and uh, cover the cash. I think all except for one of them where the limit was like 17,000 per machine and there was more than 17,000 in cash in it. So that's where they drew the line and said they wouldn't cover any more than that. Got it. But I've been pretty happy with them. They, they, um, I know that some of the other ATM guys I talked to had said that they weren't able to get insurance with Marshall and Sterling because the machines weren't bolted down. Um, okay. I don't yeah, believe that most, be down. I don't believe that all of ours were, but I'm not sure of that. But um, I would definitely, if you guys are in the space and you're looking for insurance for ATMs, I'd give Marshall Sterling a call and just see what they have. It's their high, their high risk specialty department or something like that. And, but yeah, nice. if I get my check from them, I will be pleased with having uh, worked with them. Uh, I plan to be uh, to maintain the relationship with them for a while. I think it's uh, really important to insure these cash and these machines because. Uh, it, it just seems to be random, but man, in a few months last year, we got hit four, five, six times. And, uh, and man, it, it really takes a knock out of your business. So for all the operators out there that are smaller and that only have a few machines or whatnot, it still doesn't matter. Insure them so that you're not just uh, completely screwed when somebody messes one of them up getting into it. Yeah, just so you guys know, I mean, it's Marshall and Sterling Insurance. They, they've they been around for a very long time. They're one of the original, but they're also known in the industry, just as M&S. Uh, they've been around since 1864. Um, perhaps what we can do is on one of the upcoming shows, I, I know one of the guys over there, I could probably get them on the air, and you probably have a better contact than I do. We should get one of those guys on the air to, to talk about, you know, insuring ATMs. Yeah, I'd be happy to. I'll reach out to them uh, soon here. And uh, next time I talk to them, I'll ask and invite them on. When I call to thank them for my check. Yeah, right. <laughs> when when did those break-ins happen, Mike? Uh, are, like, how long are you going to have to wait for that check? Well, it's not their fault that I'm waiting so long for the check. The break-ins happened about six or eight months ago. But um, that was right when EasyBit was starting to be managed by a few uh, different of our joint venture partners. So it was right when my staff was kind of... Uh, going away and uh, things were just very disorganized and I was living in uh, Europe at the time. So I, uh, yeah, it was just very low, long, slow process of getting all the police reports of, you know, cause like if you want to get a police report from one of these break-ins, you've got to send a, a stamp or not a stamp, but a check, you know, in a regular envelope with a stamp on it or whatever. 
and I don't even have a checkbook over here with me in Europe. So I had to, you know, I'm uh, going on my bank's website and figuring out how to order checks and putting numbers wrong or putting wrong amounts. And then they snail mail the thing uh, a week later, two weeks later to my parents. And my parents are opening it and scanning it and sending it to me. And I'm oh turning God. around and, you know, so it was... It was a nightmare getting all this information together and the videos were all too high quality and so I had to go through and reduce the sizes on that. But they've been very, very responsive and, um, uh, you know, I, I think they've already closed my case or whatever you want to call it. So uh, I don't really have any issue with them and they they seemed very thorough, like they wanted all the, the logs of the cash and this kind of stuff to make sure that we weren't, uh, you know, lying to them. Uh, which we weren't, and they didn't try to fix any of the machines. They just replaced them all. So, um, I mean, wow. a lot of them just needed a couple thousand dollars worth of repairs, but uh, I guess they don't get into that, so they just went ahead and replaced them all. But um, I think it, uh, yeah, I definitely got back more than I paid for it last year. So uh, I was actually surprised at how cheaply they were insuring uh, people. That being said, though, since I've added these extra locks, uh, over the last six months, we've had almost no break-ins. Let me knock on wood, but... Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, Marshall and Sterling, from my knowledge, is the only uh, ATM insurer in the whole U U.S. So um, if they're the only ATM insurer, I think they're probably the only Bitcoin ATM insurer, but I'm, I might be wrong about that. I don't know if they're the only ATM insurer or not, but I definitely asked... Uh, 20 different insurance companies over the last five years if they'd insure my ATMs and many people even said they would and then you know when it got down to it They just couldn't Yeah, it's a it's a difficult business actually it's a very difficult business So yeah, it makes sense that MNS is one of the one of the main ones uh, that take care of this So yeah, I definitely let's get one of the reps on the air. We happy to ask him questions about you know, uh, this industry, because it's evolving now. I mean, now we're talking about debit cards and credit cards and, you know, a lot more KYC, AML stuff. And it'd be interesting to cover some of those risks. Like, you know, they got the, the skimmers. Uh, this is the big thing I'm thinking about. You have to understand, they got the skimmers now, right? As these Bitcoin ATMs become more popular, I mean, what's, uh, they could just add a little camera on there. And now well, this, getting... is, this is already a security concern that we've had in the past, which is that some of the locations have cameras that uh, accidentally cover exactly where people's private keys are getting printed and stuff like that. So technically, right. you know, one of these uh, workers at one of the convenience stores or whatever with malicious intent could go in the back room at night and go through all the footage and uh, start scanning people's private keys until he finds somebody that hasn't sw uh, not swapped, uh, swept the... Right. <laughs> Right. Runs out of there yet. So that's the thing. So it'd be interesting to to see how these risks, uh, new risks, would be covered. So, meanwhile, um, I mean, about the other other only other thing that's really interesting this week, at least on the economic side, just to cover that briefly, uh, we we got some pretty serious red flag warnings. I mean, uh, the inverted bond yield. That's usually the first one, right? Uh, and to cover that briefly, that's where. Uh, it becomes cheaper to spend the money than to put the money away, right? Um, and then the next one is, that just happened a couple of days ago. The uh, uh, the feds had to put up something like eighty billion because the uh, overnight there's an overnight rate between banks, right? So let's say Wells Fargo used up you know ten billion of cash that day and. Now they have to, have to do an overnight lending to, to cover that, right? Well, the Fed's injected because interest rates hit 10% on overnight lending, 80 billion into the market. 80 billion. Wow. That's not little money. That's huge. And 10% on an overnight is unheard of. I mean, that's like insane. And that's another red flag warning, right? Um, and then on top of that, we got uh the interest rates uh they're about to fed they're about to cut it again who knows they might go negative especially if donald trump had this way and unfortunately that's not a good sign uh for the economy if you have uh lowering or negative interest rates uh so all of these are red flag warnings and as i've said in prior shows uh i think we're probably going to come up to at minimum a recession uh quite possibly a depression so what do you guys think about that? 
Amelia. Well, that scares me. Um, I, I mean, I'm not as knowledgeable about you uh, on the economic side, but um, yeah, it sounds like they're trying to get people to spend more money. Um, and, but they don't have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's see what happens. Maybe yeah, a good my, case for Bitcoin. Yeah, right. Michael. Yeah, it sounds like another good reason for Bitcoin um, <clears throat> when the government's just printing money and uh, yeah, I don't understand how they can have a 10% rate on a loan overnight. Is that 10% a year or 10% for that one night? Yeah, 10% for the one night. Wow. That's crazy. By the way, the 80 billion thing, I wish I had that magic button. Hit a button, <laughs> 80 billion comes out. That's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. Just, and that's don't, hit, just don't hit the nuke button by accident next yeah, time. Yeah, right. <laughs> But that's the thing. I mean, 80, 80 billion, they're probably going to do another injection. They said they're actually probably going to resume QE pretty soon, quantitative easing. And that's when all hell will break loose. So that's the thing. Right now is your red flag warning. If you're listening to this show, the U.S. dollar is starting to inflate, not just by a little, but by a lot. So that dollar you're holding on to in your wallet, if you got one of these uh, $20 bills, you know, pull one out here. If you got one of these, this is starting to become worthless. It's <laughs> going to be a $2 bill pretty soon. <clears throat> so, well, any final thoughts before we wrap up the show? Michael? No, no I guess that's pretty much all for today. I don't know. Um, I always am streaming from, broad, uh, from Barcelona over here. I don't know if anybody else is going to be around, but uh, at the end of the month, we're having a blockchain week in Barcelona. So, uh, if you're around and want to do an interview or something, be sure to give me a reach out and say hello. Emilio? No, that's it. It was an exciting show. I know we didn't have too many topics, but it was fun to call in. Yeah, for sure. We'll have to try it again sometime, see if we can reach Chris. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. Great Perfect. show, guys. Take care. Bye, everybody. Later, guys.